sick. Great. So uh, when I posted on Instagram and asked like what kind of content you guys wanted to see about on my YouTube channel, I got a lot of different answers. And one of the ones that came up quite often was uh, some sort of vlog. But yeah, people asked for a vlog and I thought, yeah, that would be fun to do, pretty interesting. I've tried to do it before, but to be honest, it's kind of hard to shoot a vlog when nothing super interesting is happening. So I thought, you know, to challenge myself today, I'll do a vlog. It's my typical Saturday. I'm going to go and train with some of my guys in another city called In Shepping where um, I started a, a jiu-jitsu club when I moved here to Sweden. Um, I'm going to close the door. Door is closed, but I guarantee someone's going to open that door and come running out. Yeah, so I thought I'd challenge myself. I will take today uh, to shoot the vlog. And basically what I'm going to do is just a simple kind of run you through what my Saturday looks like and tell you how I ended up in Sweden, which seems to also be another hot topic for people. Um, I'm on my way to my, my bus now. Um, so our training setup is a little bit interesting these times because of Corona. Just life is super interesting, right? Um, here in Sweden, we're not really required to wear masks all the time, but they do highly recommend that we do it uh, on the bus or on the train or if we're taking some sort of public transportation, which, um, you know, everyone most part does it's uh, it's strange being here but also like I feel very privileged and very lucky compared to some of my friends around the world who've had it a lot tougher you know people in the Philippines especially so I'm grateful uh, but yeah back to the vlog some interesting folk in Sweden there are some interesting folk. <laughs> I don't know what that's about. So on the walk here, because I'm not a very big planner, which, you know, if I'm going to be doing this, I need to do it right. The way filmmakers do it, which is to write a script and everything. And I kind of only decided I was going to vlog about this this morning. So, <clears throat> but now I have a system. And I'm going to break it down in steps, uh, how I ended up in Sweden. And I'm not going to start all the way back from when I left the Philippines because that's just going to be, that's going to, that's not a vlog. That's going to be like a movie because it's just such a long story. But uh, I'm going to break it down into steps. Cool. So step one, <clears throat> I actually uh, broke, uh, tore the ACL on my clavicle it's basically a ligament uh, that I don't remember I think it connects the clavicle to the shoulder blade or something like that but I tore it while I was training for the Abu Dhabi World Pro when I was living in Oman and so I chose to live over there I was teaching at a teeny weeny martial arts school that like barely even had a program it was really it was a small school, but it was a great experience and it taught me a lot to be, you know, independent and accountable for my own training. I didn't have a coach. I had to go all the way to the UAE to get good training, which meant I had to hop on a 10 hour bus ride just to get to the border of the UAE. But yeah, that's step number one. I, I got hurt. I broke my, I tore my ACL and I could no longer teach in Oman. I had to go back home to the Philippines, rest, and then kind of figure out what I was going to do after that. I had to take three months off, according to the doctor, before I could start training again. I took two. So, step two. Basically, what happened after I went home to the Philippines and uh, I got some rest, I, got, I saw a doctor, took some time to hang out with my family. Um, I decided to get back into competing and uh, there was a tournament in Singapore that I was interested in doing just to get back into the mix. So I had a friend that was teaching at a school in Singapore, a Jiu Jitsu school, and I hit him up saying, hey, can I come over and train with you? 
spend a week training with you and then compete. And he said, yeah, dude, come over. I've been wanting to train with this guy uh, for a while, so it was a good opportunity to do that. And so I went over and did that. Um, I did the tournament. Um, I might be able to find some footage of some of my matches from when I did that. But I did the tournament. Uh, I did really good. And um, also while I was there, I got to know the owner of the gym uh, of, of where I was uh, teach, uh, training at. And you know, we hit it off and they asked if I wanted to stay and teach because my friend who was teaching all of a sudden had to head off to Australia and uh, um, take, care, take care of some family uh, business or whatever, something happened and he had to go see his family back home in Australia. So they asked me if I wanted to stay and they said, oh, we'll take it week by week. If it's not a good fit, then we'll just pay for your flight back home. We'll pay you this much uh, per class and you can just sleep at the gym if you like or, or whatever. And I said, yes. Uh, fast forward one month, they ended up really, really liking me and ended up giving me a, a coaching job. And what was supposed to be, you know, two weeks became a year and a half. Uh, I spent the first, uh, a little under a year living in the gym because I wanted to, I couldn't afford to pay rent. I didn't know anybody. So I didn't have roommates or anything. and. I just wanted to save money and it was just cheaper that way to live at the gym. So I slept on the mats for a year. And um, as things, you know, as my time uh, spent there kept going, as things progressed, you know, my relationship with my ex-girlfriend started to unravel and just we ended up not being together anymore at some point. And um, shortly after that, I met Emma. When it was time to leave Singapore, uh, we had to decide where we were going to go. I think we both were kind of over Singapore. Um, she had moved there with her ex, so she didn't want to stay there because he was also around and it just felt weird. She wanted a new start. And I also wanted to kind of explore. Uh, I, ha I really loved Singapore. I made amazing friends. I met amazing people who I consider like really good friends of mine lifelong friend friendships but um you know, it was time to explore something new and i had an opportunity which brings me to step three So a lot of people. Yeah. So we're here. Yeah. This is me. Boom. Look up. I hook. My other foot goes under. Put it on the mat. You're kind of shelving it on your leg. Right? Now from here, I bring myself as close as I can. Grab. Now I underhook. Boom. How was it? Who are you?
Sweet. I'm on the way home now. Uh, just got from training. And I'll discuss... Was it step three or step four? I'm lost. But I'll discuss what happened uh, after Singapore. Um, basically, after Singapore, I had an option to move to Australia at a place called Noosa where I met a really cool guy by the name of Yoshi Hasegawa. And... Uh, yeah, he runs an academy out there now called uh, Kaza BJJ, but at the time he was with Infinity Nusa. And I spent some weeks out there teaching and training with them, and it was amazing. And, you know, Nusa seemed like an amazing place to live, but just at the time didn't fit what I needed and what Emma needed, which was a little bit more stability, um, and I guess a little bit more familiarity for one of us. So then we decided to instead give it a try at Sweden. Yeah, within Sweden, we ended up hopping around. At first we moved to Enköping because that's where we could find an apartment. <clears throat> Later on, we ended up moving back to Uppsala, which is where Emma is uh, originally from. And now we live in a sick neighborhood and I love it. Uh, uh, it does require some traveling for me to get to in shipping. It's not too bad though. I just take the bus but That brings me to what I'm trying to achieve now, which is have my Academy the name of the Academy We've settled on is vibe dojo. I will be working very very hard along with my partner to get it going and hopefully be able to get it running by August we want to have a soft opening in July but hopefully by August we'll have it running, we'll have classes going on, members coming into the building hopefully, and just uh, be able to train Jiu-Jitsu in my home city. So yeah. Swedish pancakes. Made by a Swedish woman. The only way to have them. Uh, honey, where's the strawberry jam? There it is, already out. So take her knowledge about strength and conditioning, you know, her knowledge about yoga, and build a really cool place for people to train Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, as well as be able to do other things. So, yeah, that's it. I'm gonna eat.